Hi guys, today I'm gonna to show you a fantastic dessert recipe to make for Easter Sunday, or really any springtime occasion. It's my gluten-free chocolate cake recipe that is rich and fudgy and so delicious and so easy to put together. Let me show you how to make it. All right, so we are first gonna begin by melting our chocolate and butter. Make sure you get one that has at least 70% cocoa in it because that's gonna just give you the best flavor. So the first thing we're gonna do is add the butter. So this is my little trick. Anytime I'm adding butter and chocolate together, I always add the butter first. That way, when it starts to melt, it'll have like a little pool that you can then add the chocolate into. If you add the chocolate first and then the butter, sometimes that chocolate can start to melt and it'll start to scorch before the butter starts to melt. So I always think it's better to add the butter first. There, so my chocolate is all melted. I'm just gonna set this aside and let it cool. And then the other thing you can do is prep your cheesecake pan, just with a little baking spray. And because this is such a fudgy cake, I do like to have some added assurance and just spray it down well. Then you wanna take four eggs and separate them so you'll have your yolks and your whites. You need both, but first we're gonna start with the yolks and in they are going to go to an electric mixer. And then to that I'm gonna add a cup of sugar, just plain old white sugar. Then using the paddle attachment or your egg beaters, you are going to whip this up. Now, the thing with this, this is probably the most important part of this whole recipe, is these eggs and the sugar really need to beat up to a very pale yellow color. It'll probably take about five to seven minutes. On high. There, so it should look like this. Pale yellow, thickened and kind of ribbony. Then you're good to go. At this stage, we're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then because our chocolate mixture has cooled down enough, we can then add that. And then the other thing I like to add is one tablespoon of orange zest. The combination of the rich chocolate and the orange zest, especially in the springtime, is such a welcomed flavor combination. Okay, then we can whip this up. And then just scrape down the bowl as needed. So anytime I'm mixing something in an electric mixer, whenever I take it off, I also just kind of give it a stir, just because sometimes some of that batter can get kind of stuck in the bottom of your electric mixer. So it is a good idea just to give it another hand stir. All right, so in we go with the chocolate mixture. And you can see it's pretty runny at this stage, but we are going to lighten it with some egg whites. Then you wanna whip up your egg whites. So I'm gonna add my four egg whites in. And then you just wanna whip it up until soft peaks form. For the dry ingredients, you're gonna take a cup and a half of just ground almond flour. It'll also be listed sometimes as almond meal. It's all the same thing. And then you're also gonna add a teaspoon of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt. There you go. And then you can just whisk that up until everything is combined. And then almond flour can be a little bit lumpy. So I do like to use a fine mesh sieve just to sift it um, to work out the lumps. It's not a critical step if you don't have a fine mesh sieve, but if you want extra credit, <laughs> this is a good step. Okay, then you can just whisk this up with the almond flour. In it goes. Then we can add our egg whites slowly in thirds just to lighten this thick chocolate mixture. And every time you add a little bit of egg white, it's gonna become lighter and lighter. You just wanna fold it in so that you don't deflate your egg whites um, and end up with a cake that isn't as light. There, so now we can just pour this right in our prepared pan and it'll be ready for the oven. So a lot of you keep asking me about this bowl um, that I use in my videos. I actually got it at Ikea and it was the best bargain because I think it was like $7. Um, and I will leave you a link in the description if you wanna know where to get one. I love it because it has a little spout on the end of it. So it helps for pouring batter or eggs or any other thing um, that you have to pour. Okay, now you just wanna smooth out the cake. You don't wanna take it like you do sometimes other cake recipes where you bang it on the counter to get rid of the air bubbles because that will deflate all of our gorgeous egg whites. So you don't wanna do that. If you wanted to do anything, you could shake it just a little bit um, just to gently level it. Okay, then we are gonna place this in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for just about 30 minutes. You wanna make sure that it doesn't dry out and it still retains its fudginess. So I say check it at 30. If the toothpick comes out clean, you're good to go. All right, my cake is completely cooled. It's come out of the oven and it is time to release it. Now you could just take this and pop it on your cake stand, but, but I don't know, I don't think that looks so pretty. So I like to try to gingerly remove it with a large spatula. So if you have a large spatula like this, this will work, or even a cake lifter would be even better. But I lost my cake lifter, so I'm just gonna use this. So just go around the perimeter, kind of stick it under and then turn it. I think that is the best. See, and it'll start to loosen and then you can just very 
gingerly, release it. Ta-da! <laughs> so when you are zesting your orange, leave a little patch here that you actually don't zest and you're gonna use that for the garnish on top. Then you just wanna cut little strips of it about, I don't know, like an eighth of an inch. Not very big. Then we are gonna dust our cake with a little bit of powdered sugar. I actually like to use a fine mesh sieve and just dust the sugar over it. And you can put as little or as much as you like. No judging. <laughs> and then if you get any sugar on your cake stand, like I just did, <laughs> you can just brush it off. I do find though it's better to put the sugar on when the cake is on the cake stand than in the tin. Because sometimes when you go to release it from the tin, it, you'll start to smudge the sugar. So that's just one little thing I've learned. Then you can put your little orange peel slices in the center like that. Just a little flourish. I think it's fun to kind of garnish things with the ingredients that are inside, just to kind of give people a sneak peek of what's to come. And I would serve this cake with some homemade whipped cream and I will leave you my recipe in the description. All right, you guys, I hope you give this one a try and let me know what you think. And if you would like to be the first to get my videos in your inbox each week, subscribe to my newsletter. The link is below. All right, I'll see you back there next time. Until then, bye.